Hey folks, I'm Dr. Mike. Welcome to Targeting the Muscle series. We have triceps as the muscle and skull crushers as the exercise and wife as the model to demonstrate because I'm no longer sufficiently mobile to do skull crushers properly enough to illustrate them to you. You just learn to do them wrong, like my fat ass. So, wife, yes. you're not microphone, so your answers are irrelevant. Perfect, let's get to it. Tip number one is in the skull crusher. It is ideal to have your elbows in as much as possible. On the way down, it is critical. On the way up, it's probably okay to flare them a little bit to use your chest to help out a tad because then it allows a crap load of eccentric overload for something that you may not be able to get as many concentric reps with super elbows in. Elbows in on the way down is a must. And then way up, if it organically just comes out a little bit, that's no big deal. It's not crazy in my book. Just don't turn it into a bench press. You're gonna notice where Crystal puts the bar and it's gonna be on her throat. Sounds awkward. On, not in. Maybe also in. I will address that later. So save your questions for later. And by save your questions, I mean type them in right now, having not gotten to that section in the comments. It's great for the algorithm. Let's get this done. So here is the bar. And you grab. And notice if she's going to do it wrong, she's going to flare her shit out and turn it into kind of a close grip something or other. If she's going to do it right, she's going to start with her elbows flush in and go nice and deep, perfect. Elbows stay super straight, and she's gonna come up, and she's really awesome. As she comes up, she's also gonna keep her elbows straight. That is the ideal. If they flare a bit, I just wouldn't worry about it. One more rep, honey. On the way in, perfect. And all the way up, beautiful. Tip number two is to make sure that you think about at least trying this out breaking forward at the elbows instead of back at the elbows to initiate the movement. We'll show you what this means in a second. This is something that I discovered helps my elbow health a ton. I posted some Instagram skull crusher tips and a bunch of people get in there and they're like, yeah, you do these if you want to destroy your elbows. I don't know how that sounds like a tough guy saying my elbows are made out of literal vaginas, but in any case, you can solve that problem in most cases. If you start reaching back right away, you can get tons of elbow pain. In my experience and that of many others I have coached, if you break forward to your hips and then down just by a smidge, it's the same thing that in a squat, instead of breaking at your knees and going down like that, feels awkward even to demonstrate, you break at the hips gently by a little and then you let your knees go, makes your elbows feel right as rain. Okay, so grab this. Do it wrong first, Crystal, where you just reach back. Yeah, ooh, it can work for people. This can work, but sometimes it'll have non-consensual sex with your elbows. On the other hand, the proper way, watch her elbows will shoot towards her hips and then the bar descends. Elbows to hips and then go down. Just really briefly, elbows to hips and then we descend. Just like that, it puts a ton of stretch on the tricep. It does everything we want properly and it keeps those elbows greasy. Is that good? Yeah. Yeah, do you feel grease in your elbows? I feel greasy. Excellent, that's gross. Tip number three is super individualized first and super varied second. You're gonna do this tip however you feel is best for you and there could be more than one correct answer. The cue here or the correction or the recommendation is where are we touching? because there's a lot of fake controversy on the internet about what a proper skull crusher looks like. Let me give you guys a tour of options, like a tour de France, except drug tested properly. No, none of that, untested, real tour de France. Grab that shit. Option number one, that is totally valid and totally fine if your elbows can take it and you feel a great connection with your tricep is actually, Crystal, this may be your first time doing this, but you've heard that a lot lately, huh? Touch the bar to the bench right behind you, right above your head. Oh shit. Oh shit, my little tiny little arms go. Boom, that's a thing. And then press up. That's a thing people do. One more time just for the viewers. Go all the way and literally just rest it on the bench behind you and come up. 
feels weird, right? Yeah, especially with my short arms. Yes, you need longer arms. <laughs> so just work on that, and we'll come back next time. All right, Great. Good. The next option is to touch your forehead, the usual, the classic skull crusher. Perfect. Yep, one more just for the viewers. Notice these are all done under full control. We'll talk about that in a bit. Great. Option number three is to touch the nose. Look at the little baby nose. He's adorable. Beautiful, just touch your nose. People will see me do this online and say I'm kissing the barbell, false. I'm, I only kiss one woman, isn't that right? Mm -hmm. What was her name? All right, uh, <laughs> even Scott the video guy liked that one. Scott the video guy is a total piece of shit, so he loves jokes <laughs> like that. Another option is to touch the chin. Give that a shot. Beautiful, and that's great. And then option number last is, this is a killer. Not everyone can pull this off. You have to have the right proportions, Crystal sure does, is the throat. Holy shit, we're risking life and limb for this one, but it can feel amazing. Beautiful, Crystal, thank you so much, I will take that. Now, which option is right for you, again, depends on, do you feel it ripping your triceps into shreds? First question. Second question, how are your shoulder joints feeling? How are your elbow joints feeling? Some of these, you'll try and you'll be like, fuck that. I'm gonna be Mr. Potato Head, shit'll fall off midway through. Fuck it, don't do that. Find one that works for you. It could be a couple of them, and then you have three or two or even four different variations you can program for a few months at a time throughout the year. No wrong answers. Fundamentally, the technique setup is the same. It's just where the arc takes you and where you actually hit on various parts of your body. None of these are particularly more dangerous than any one of them. Some of them cause a bit more shearing force, some cause less. Some will involve other muscles like the lats. If you touch behind your head and you have a back day the next day, you might find that you actually have lat soreness. Just play around with that stuff. I'm just giving you guys a ton of options and letting you just dive into that all you can eat buffet. But do not get the fucking potatoes into the macaroni and cheese. I swear to God, we're gonna have a fucking problem. All right, folks, next tip is to make sure you go slow and controlled on the way down. Yes, if you rush the reps, you can do more reps. And the big skull crusher rep counter in the sky goes up and God's sitting up there in heaven. And he's like, yes, yes, that's pretty good, pretty good. But you end up with smaller triceps and a more likely probability of injury, which while you're on this mortal earth, is bad. So Crystal is gonna demonstrate the throat skull crusher. This is for sure gonna turn into a meme. Uh, yeah, like that's fine, you know, but uh, it would be better if she went a little slower. So we're gonna control, arguably pause and come up, slow and control, pause for that deep stretch and come up. As the Italian Americans say, beautiful. All right, next tip is about where to put your hands. And this is one of these patented Dr. Mike and RP answers of, we don't really give you an answer, we just tell you to go fuck yourself and say intellectual shit that sounds like an answer. Just kidding, sort of. There is no correct answer about where to put your hands that can be generally applied. Close, totally fine. Medium, totally fine. Even wide can be fine in some occasions. Where you put your hands, and if you use a straight bar or an easy bar, is up to you, the individual, to decide. But we're not just gonna leave you with that. Like bullshit, stock, Instagram, it depends answer. It depends on how three things go. Thing one is how do your elbows feel? Thing two is how do your shoulders feel? Thing three is how do your triceps actually feel? Are they getting a good hit? If you pick a grip that someone on the internet with no degree in biomechanics still posts on Instagram, said is optimal, or whatever kind of bullshit they're saying nowadays, and you do it, and your elbows hurt like shit, your shoulders feel like they're gonna fall out, and you don't really feel a whole lot in your triceps, that's the fucking wrong answer. If you try another grip, which people said was bad and don't do, it's terrible, and your elbows feel golden brown, your shoulders feel unbelievable, and your triceps feel like they're being torn to shreds, you have found the for now correct answer. Why'd I say for now? Because our bodies change over time, our muscles and joints adapt to stresses over time, they become resistant to hypertrophy from certain angles over time. So if you realize that for yourself, both this grip and this grip work roughly equally well, 
you can do a couple of months of this grip until it gets really stale and ah, it's kind of nagging things and triceps aren't getting a huge pump anymore and getting in on this grip and all of a sudden it feels fresh, amazing and new. You just go back and forth on them. Instead of just having one skull crusher exercise to program, you have two. I just multiplied your skull crusher exercises for you. Next, am I gonna multiply your wealth? Absolutely. I have a Forex trading account. I do crypto. Uh, Scott, what other kind of bullshit is out there? I'm a wealth manager. I'll take over your portfolio, get you into gold. Oh, NFTs. NFTs, I do only, I am an NFT. You feel me? And you will be one too if you sign up for my NFT now course.net. <clears throat> Let's get to the last tip already. All right, folks, last tip of the day. The Smith machine, it exists. Some gentleman named Smith clearly invented it. You can put a bench in here and do Smith machine skull crushers for another excellent variation in addition to your barbell and easy bar work. I would recommend that if there is a slant to your machine, you face your genitals into the direction of the slant. So here the slant goes out, so I would lay back this way on a bench so that as I go down, the ship pulls my triceps forward for me. It feels unbelievable, it's a huge stretch. If I was to turn it, it would pull my triceps back and instead of reducing this elbow angle and getting a huge stretch at the bottom, it kind of pulls everything apart, feels kind of weird, turns into a bit more lats. If the other way works better for you, forget what I'm saying and do it, but you probably want to do it in the direction I'm talking about. Combo tip here, tip number whatever, sub A, here's sub B. Inverted skull crushers are a thing and they're fucking awesome. It's what skull crushers are to bench press, these things are two push-ups. So a Smith machine is the perfect place to do them. You can also do them in the rack if you just have a rack at home. Find a comfy height, put your grip wherever you normally do skull crush your grip, take a comfy foot position away. You'll have to experiment as to where you wanna to touch and then you bend your elbows in and you let's say touch the chin and come up. Keep your elbows in the way down. All the same identical cues as a skull crusher. You can do it to your throat. You can do it to your face, anything you want. You can do it to your face. Where you put your feet is gonna depend a ton on your height, bar position, arm length, et cetera. There's no right answer, but within a few warmups, you'll realize where all the good stuff is. And here's a really cool thing. When you start warming up, start at a high height. If you're not super duper crazy strong, you're gonna to have to keep it at a pretty high height. If you are stronger as you warm up, you drop the shit and it mechanically makes this more difficult. If you're a fucking superhero, you put the shit all the way down. And if you're like Amazo the Android from DC superhero, you can even put your feet on a box and then do these almost at a decline. Holy fucking shit. It's amazing. Life is amazing. Isn't life beautiful? Folks, click, click, stop this stupid fucking video. Go outside, look at trees, interact with people. Find a random person on the street and just give them a hug. And if they don't want it, slip a fucking get that underhook in and give them a hug anyway against their will. They'll agree to it eventually. Don't take any of that advice. Folks, any of the advice you hear, you, you saw here on Skull Crushers, hopefully it works for you. If it doesn't, feel free to ask me a question in the comments and uh, I'll get one of my butlers to answer it. See you guys next time. This is how you do this, understand?